Hello everyone and welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt and today I wanted to talk about a thing that I have a good amount of expertise in but I never have a great chance to talk about on this channel and that is e-commerce. So I'm a product designer by day and I work at a payments enablement company who enables payments for hundreds of thousands of merchants around the globe. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where I work, uh, but you could probably figure it out if you really wanted to. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna be shilling any specific product. I'm really gonna be talking in generalities around kind of how this stuff works, how people take payments specifically online. And so this is relevant to the ongoing conversation around whether Apple and Google should allow in-app payments from other payment providers. Should we allow other companies to provide payment forms in apps that go around the in-app purchase systems that Apple and Google have set up today that take 15 to 30% of the cut themselves? Should merchants have another option? And one of the concerns often brought up by the consumer side is I don't wanna give my payment data to a random company who is gonna steal it, they're gonna do nefarious things with it, they're gonna sell it on the black market, or they're gonna be in, they're gonna have good intentions, but they're going to lose the card in a data breach or something. And I'm gonna have to replace my card, I'm gonna have to dispute charges, it's gonna be a whole thing. I don't wanna do it. I want just wanna give my card to Apple because they're gonna handle the card data correctly and everything's great, <laughs> right? So that's the consumer side. Uh, there's some concerns around giving your card number to merchants. On the merchant side, we have the exact same concern actually. Merchants in general today don't want your card information. They don't want your card data because it's a liability for them. Uh, even if they are totally well-intentioned and everything, uh, like I said, there could be a data breach. They could have someone get into their server, into their database, and if your card numbers are there, if you have a ton of credit cards, that is a massive headache for the merchant, um, more than a headache really, but it's a big thing for them and they just don't wanna deal with it. And so what merchants are looking for is something called SAC A compliance. And so I'm gonna be very general here. This is not the whole story, but the gist of it is, is this is a compliance level you can fall into if you are an e-commerce merchant who takes payments on your website, but never touches the credit card information. You have no idea what the credit card ever is uh, because of the integration method you're using. And so there's a couple ways you can do that. I wanted to go through those today. So there's two options. The first one is a hosted checkout page. And so this is something you've definitely seen before. This is where you're on a merchant's website. You will like find a product you wanna buy, you hit buy now, and it redirects you to a whole other website. The design of the page is different. Uh, the URL in the address bar changes. It's a totally different web page, and it may be from a company who you know. It may be a payment provider that you're familiar with. Maybe not, uh, but it's going to be a whole different website. And so this is totally separate from the merchant environment. You're gonna enter all your payment details, including your card information, and then you submit the form. It's approved, the transaction's approved, and then you're shot back to the merchant's website where you see a receipt or some sort of thank you page. And that's the process. And in that scenario, it's very clear that the payment is happening outside the merchant's environment. It's not a thing the merchant has access to. And uh, you, you hopefully assume this, but maybe you don't. Um, is that when that like redirect happens, the merchant is getting an update on the transaction status, they may get like a response code or something, but they never see the credit card data itself. So in that scenario, the credit card is completely and obviously, I would say, separated from the merchant. The second method is more clever and more transparent. Uh, and basically what this is, is the idea that you can put inline fields on your website or that look like they're on your website but they're actually hosted by your payment provider. And so how this works is basically you load a JavaScript library on your merchant's website. So you're the merchant, you're developing your website, you load this JavaScript library that your gateway provider uh, creates, and then you tell it where to draw your credit card number, expiration date, and CVV fields on your website. And so what the JavaScript service does is it will load iframes in those spots it will load text fields inside those iframes. Uh, it'll make it so that they look like they're on your website. The integrator can pass in styling options and everything to make sure they look the same as everything else on the web page. So from the user's perspective, they're totally transparent. They look like it's all happening on one website. But what you can do is you can actually, next time you're doing this, uh, if you see the credit card field, right click in the credit card field, hit inspect element, and then see if that field is being rendered inside an iframe. It probably will be, and if it is, you can see the URL that's like loading, that's in the iframe. It'll show you the payment provider they're using. It's pretty cool, pretty clever, um, but the gist is because of the way cross-origin stuff works in browsers, the merchant's website has no way of knowing what's happening in those fields. So basically what happens is you can like click into those fields, you can tab through them, like you can tab from the merchant's website into these iframes totally seamlessly. It's really, really nice. 
And basically, once the user submits the form after they filled everything out, all those iframes, so the credit card expiration and CVV iframes, all do their own submissions straight to the payment gateway, not to the merchant site. They submit to the gateway, and the gateway creates this uh, payment token. And the payment token is basically just a token that represents the card number. It's totally random, has no way to be decrypted or anything. And that token is given back to the merchant uh, that they can submit for a transaction via an API request. And so the merchant only gets this payment token. That's all they ever get. And they submit that to the gateway. The gateway decrypts the token, or at least they access the card number that the token represents. We're really in the weeds at this point. But it then submits the transaction to the pr processor. The processor gets a response. The gateway tells the merchant's <laughs> um, integration whether the transaction was approved or declined. And then the merchant shows you a receipt based on that response. And so that's what happens. The merchant never touches your card information. Uh, and again, because they want full control of the flow, they want full control of the user experience, but they don't want to touch the credit card. And this method allows them to do that. So hopefully that made sense. It's kind of confusing to talk about. I really compressed uh, how quickly uh, I explained it. <laughs> but yeah, that's the gist of it is that at a very high level, what they're doing is making it look like they're collecting your card data, even though they're not. They're controlling everything. They're making it look how they want, look and feel how they want. The flow works how they want, but they never actually touch your credit card. And that's huge for the merchant. So yeah, hopefully that sheds some light on how all of this works. Um, the real big thing I wanted to share is that merchants in general don't want your credit card number any more than you want to give it to them, <laughs> right? Um, everybody's concerned about this. Uh, most people want to outsource handling the credit card information to somebody else, whether it be a payment gateway or an app store or something. So I totally understand that. Um, but I think that there are ways that merchants are able to collect this data more securely than a lot of end users think. And I wanted to share that today. So hopefully I got that across. Uh, if you liked it at all, uh, hit the like button and I will see you here next time on A Better Computer. Bye-bye.